Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Today, taking a look at this 2008. This is a Chevrolet Cobalt. It's got the four cylinder engine. And the customer complaint is that the check engine light is illuminated. It also feels like it's got a really bad misfire. Now, I don't expect this one to be complicated at all, really. I just kind of wanted to bring you guys along, maybe give you some tips and tricks on how to diagnose a problem like this. So hopefully you guys stick it out to the end of the video. Anyway, you guys already know how we do this. I'm gonna start by connecting the scan tool. We'll see what codes we got. So let me take you guys inside the vehicle. I'm gonna go ahead and start this thing up. And if you guys take a look at the instrument cluster, you can see that we do have a check engine light illuminated. You can see it just started flashing. What that's telling us is that we have a misfire present at the moment. And I can tell you guys right now, I definitely feel it. The engine is shaking pretty bad. And if you pay close attention, you might be able to hear the idle surge. You might even be able to see it on the RPM needle there. Yeah, check it out. You see how it's bouncing around there? So we definitely have a misfire. I'm gonna go ahead and connect the scan tool. Now today what we're using is a C Reader Elite. And this one here is actually specifically made for GM vehicles. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in like so. You can see our tools powering up. I'm gonna shut the engine off because we really don't need it running for us to read codes. However, we do need the ignition powered on. So I did turn the key on. If you guys didn't already notice, you can hear that we have an air door actuator over there that's making a bunch of noise. It sounds like somebody's trying to get out. So I'm gonna show you guys how to use this tool in order to diagnose your check engine light. So we're gonna start by clicking diagnose. Then we'll click on auto detect. And this is going to scan for the VIN number. It's asking us if it's an automatic or manual transmission. This is an automatic, so we'll click on automatic. This vehicle does not have stability enhancement, so we'll click on that. And as you guys can see, it is running a health report, which means it's gonna scan all of the modules on the vehicle. Again, like I said, guys, this thing is specifically made for GM. And what's awesome about it is that it is a full-blown professional level GM scan tool in a handheld unit. So this will actually scan every module that's on your vehicle. Okay, so this thing finished scanning and you can see it generated a report for us. So if we scroll down here, you can see that it lists all of the trouble codes that we have in each of the modules. So I'm gonna start by clicking on the engine control module. You guys can see we have seven codes present. We'll start up here at the top. We have a PO171 fuel system lean. We also have this PO300 engine misfire detected. We have a PO455 evaporative emission large leak detected. We have a PO463 fuel level sensor circuit high voltage. We have a PO573 brake switch circuit high. We also have a PO700 transmission control module requested malfunction indicator lamp. And we have a P1174 fuel trim cylinder balance. So we have quite a few different codes here in the ECM. Some of them may or may not be related. Of course, we got the misfire. That's probably going to be the main one that we're going to focus on today. Because of course, oftentimes when you have a bad enough misfire, it can cause codes like this PO171 to come up, but we're gonna continue down the line here and we're gonna move over to the TCM. You can see we have two codes in the TCM. I'm gonna click on it. Looks like we have a PO573 cruise control brake switch circuit high voltage. We saw that in the ECM. Then we have this PO973 one to two shift solenoid control circuit low voltage. Then if we scroll down here, we have the body control module. I'm gonna click on that. You can see that we've got three different codes. We have this B1325 device one power circuit voltage below threshold. We have a B3948 left front turn signal circuit short to battery or open and a B3949 right front turn signal circuit short to battery or open. Now, if we scroll down here, you can see that we also have a few codes in the passenger present system. Looks like we have some codes for the turn signals as well. We have a code in the radio. And we have a code in the remote control door lock receiver. So we got some uh, keyless entry codes here. And if we scroll down here, we also have the theft deterrent module. Looks like we got two codes, a B3055 and a B3935. Well, I'm not going to really worry about those codes because the key that we have in the ignition seems to work. It starts the vehicle up just fine and we don't have any security light present. So we're not going to worry about those. Now, the other cool thing about the scan tool is that the report that it generates can actually be shared. So if you're connected to the internet through Wi-Fi, you can actually email this to your customer, which I think is a really cool option. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and back out of this menu. I wanna go into the engine control module. So here we have the menu for the ECM. And if you take a look, you can see that we have a lot of different options because like I mentioned before, guys, this is a full blown GM scan tool. So it does have the ability to do bi-directional controls. What I wanna do is I wanna go into read data stream and I'm going to choose misfire data. Now here we have a list of data PIDs, all of them that are related to the misfires. But what I wanna do is I wanna scroll down and I wanna find the misfire counters for our cylinders one through four. Okay, so here we have misfire counter for cylinder number one, cylinder number two, number three, and number four. Now that I have those selected, I'm gonna click on okay. And here we have our misfire counters. I'm gonna go ahead and start the vehicle up. Now let's take a look at the scan tool and you can already see that cylinder number two is definitely where our misfire is happening. You'll see that cylinder number one is counting a little bit, but 
you'll also notice that it's not counting as much as cylinder number two. Now, the reason for that is because oftentimes when you have a cylinder that's misfiring bad enough, it can cause other cylinders to count erroneously. So really what we're doing here is we're gonna pay attention to the one that's counting the most, the one that obviously shows to have a problem. And in our case, it's definitely cylinder number two. I mean, take a look at that. We have over a hundred misfires on number two and only one on cylinder number one at the moment. Uh, we're getting up to 200. We got really close to 200 there for a second. So yeah, our problem is definitely cylinder number two. Now, the first thing I like to rule out whenever dealing with the misfire, especially on a four cylinder engine like this, is whether or not we have a bad ignition coil. Testing our ignition coil is actually really easy to do, especially when they're really easy to get to, like in our case here. So here's our number two ignition coil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swap it over with our number three. Now, before I take this number two ignition coil out, let's take a look at it and see if there's anything obviously wrong with it. Now, I really can't tell much just by looking at this one. However, in the past, I have seen some that were pretty obviously burned or shorted out, and you'll actually sometimes see that these things have bubbled over or completely melted. In this case, the only thing that I see is that it looks like we have maybe some remnants from some type of rodent living down here. Seeing rodent droppings does make me worry about a wiring problem. So just doing a quick visual inspection here and looking for any obvious signs that something was chewing on these wires. But just by looking at these, I don't see anything obvious. I mean, the wire loom has broken away. However, the wires themselves look pretty good. So let's go ahead and swap these out. Now, before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and mark an X on our suspected bad coil. Now let's go ahead and unplug it. We'll do the same to number three. Now, before we remove any of the coils, I'm gonna blow this out with compressed air. Coils out. Now, before I pop the coils back in, I do wanna show you guys, this is our suspected bad coil. And what I like to do is actually take a look at the boot because oftentimes you'll find that uh, the coil has a misfire due to a leak in the secondary, meaning that the spark is jumping past the boot. And so whenever that happens, you can sometimes see traces of carbon tracking or sometimes even burn marks from arcing. And so looking at this coil, I don't see any signs of that. However, like I said, swapping over the coil is a surefire way for us to determine whether or not this thing is bad. So we're gonna pop the number two coil into the number three hole and the number three coil in the number two hole. Then we'll plug them back in. Now let's go ahead and start this engine up and see if our misfire moved over from cylinder number two to cylinder number three. All right, so we're back inside the vehicle. I'm gonna start this thing up. Ooh, it had a little bit of a rough start there. And again, we definitely have a misfire. Let's go ahead and take a look at our counters and take a look at that. Now we have a misfire on cylinders number two and three. That is interesting. All right, guys, so just because I'm curious, um, I think what I wanna try to do is move the coil that's in our number three cylinder over here. Again, this is our suspected bad one. You can see I marked it with an X and I'm just gonna move it over to the number four hole, which if you guys didn't know, I guess I should have mentioned this to begin with, our cylinder order here is one, two, three, four. And I guess while I'm at it, you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and take the coil out of our number two and swap it over with the coil that was in our number one hole. Let's go ahead and put this in. And we're gonna see if any of these misfires moved. All right, so let's start this thing back up. All right, so check it out, guys. We still have a misfire on cylinder number two, but our cylinder number three misfire moved over to cylinder number four. All right, guys, so it's pretty obvious now that our cylinder number two, which was our original misfiring cylinder, had to have been misfiring due to not only a bad ignition coil, but there's something else going on here. Could it be a bad spark plug, a bad fuel injector, or maybe a compression problem? Those are all possibilities. However, in my honest opinion, it's pretty likely that we just have a spark plug that's fouled. And so it's possible that because the fuel injector was still spraying fuel into the cylinder, that the spark plug got wet and now it could no longer fire. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the spark plug out of the number two cylinder. So there goes our spark plug and it definitely looks like it's covered in fuel. Hopefully you guys can see that, but this thing is wet. So I'm gonna try to clean this up real quick. We'll stick it back in the hole and see if our misfire goes away. A few moments later. All right guys, so there's our spark plug after cleaning it up. Basically what I did was I just sprayed it down with some brake cleaner and I gave it a little bit of love with a soft wire brush. And as you guys can see, it looks pretty clean. I also went ahead and I blew it out with some compressed air just to make sure it was completely dry. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stick it back in the hole, reinstall the coil, and we'll see if our misfire goes away. And it looks like we still have a misfire on cylinder number two. Interesting. 
All right, guys, so because I'm curious of whether or not we can even generate a spark here on the cylinder number two, I went ahead and I connected my spark tester. Now, you guys may have seen me use this in my past videos. Basically, this thing plugs into the ignition coil boot. And then over here, I have it grounded to this nut. I've got the adjustment screw set pretty moderately. So I'm gonna go ahead and move inside the vehicle and crank the engine over. All right, so as you guys can see, we had a pretty strong spark. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to back out the screw and I'm going to put it somewhere around 30 kV just to see how strong this spark is. I'm gonna go ahead and crank the engine over. All right, so as you guys can see, we had a pretty strong spark there. Now, what exactly does that tell us? That tells us that the power in the ground getting to the ignition coil is good, and also the computer control getting to the coil is there as well. So that leaves us with the possibility that we may have a problem with either the fuel injector or a compression issue. Now, one of the first and easiest tests I like to do whenever I'm dealing with a vehicle that I believe has a compression issue is I like to listen to the way the engine cranks. Now, the nice thing about this vehicle is that it has what we call a clear flood mode. That means that if we put our foot on the accelerator and push it all the way to the floor and hold it during cranking, we can crank this engine over without it starting. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up on a tripod under the hood. I'll crank this thing over and we'll listen to the way it sounds. Now, before I crank this engine over, what I want you guys to listen for is the rhythm of the engine. On a good running engine, we should have an even repetitive rhythm. It should sound something like this. Now, if we had a problem where we had low compression on one cylinder, the rhythm may sound off, kind of like this. And I know it sounds funny when I make that sound. You guys are probably laughing at me right now. However, this is one of the quickest and easiest ways to identify whether or not you have a cylinder with low compression. So I'm gonna move inside the vehicle and crank this thing over. Did you guys hear that? I think we may have a cylinder with low compression. All right, guys, so I've got my compression gauge connected. I'm on cylinder number two for obvious reasons. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera up on a tripod and crank this engine over. All right, guys, so it doesn't look like we registered any compression on that cylinder at all. Let me switch it over to the cylinder number three just to compare it. All right, so I moved the compression gauge over to cylinder number three. Now let me go ahead and crank this thing over and we'll see what we got. All right, guys, so check that out. We have about 100 PSI worth of compression on our cylinder number three, we had absolutely no compression on cylinder number two. So we obviously have a mechanical problem here. All right, guys, so now that we know that we definitely have an issue with low compression on cylinder number two, the next thing we need to do is figure out where we're losing our compression. So if you look down here, you can see I have my leak down tester. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to spin the engine over until cylinder number two is on top dead center. So I'm gonna set the camera up and we're gonna watch this screwdriver. And we'll see if we can get this piston all the way to the top. All right, so I'm gonna spin the engine over. I'm gonna try to get it to the top somewhere right about there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull the screwdriver out. We'll install the hose. I'm gonna connect our compressed air. Now, if you look at the gauges, you can see that over here on the right-hand side, our needle is at the set point. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the hose to our number two cylinder. We gotta do this gently to prevent the engine from spinning over. Now take a look at the leak down gauge. You can see that we're running high leak down. So we definitely have a big leak here. Sorry, the air compressor just came on. So because we're showing a leak down on the gauge over here, the next thing we need to do is figure out where we're leaking from. So I went ahead and I removed this air intake box because we wanna to try to listen to see where the air is coming out of. And so first thing we can do is listen to the throttle body. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm going to use my thumb to just open the throttle body slightly. And I'm going to stick my ear close to it and listen for air leaking. I don't really hear much coming out of the throttle body, so I don't think that's where our problem is. The next thing we can do is go ahead and pull the oil cap off of the valve cover. We'll put our ear close to it and listen. Again, guys, I really don't hear much coming out of the crankcase here, so it doesn't seem like piston rings are the problem here. Let's go ahead and check the exhaust. All right, guys, so moving over to the tailpipe, let's listen and see if we can hear any air coming out of here. Ooh, and I can tell you right now, it definitely sounds like we have air coming out of there. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to hear it. I can barely hear it, but you know what? I can definitely feel it. Just by having my hand here, I can feel the air flow. Oh, and watch what happens when I try to top it off. It's building up pressure. I'm gonna let off. I really hope you guys were able to hear that, but we definitely have air leaking out of the exhaust. 
All right, guys, so it's pretty evident that we have a leaking exhaust valve on our cylinder number two. The next thing I wanna do is use my boroscope camera to see if we can get a visual on what the exhaust valve looks like. All right, so moving into the cylinder, the top of our piston looks pretty dirty, but I don't see any signs of obvious damage to the piston. Let me go ahead and switch the camera to the sideways view. Okay, so here we have a sideways view. Check it out, guys. If you notice, take a look at the valve seat for this particular valve. You can see it looks like the valve is not properly sitting in the seat. Now compare it to the one next to it. You can see this one sitting in the valve seat nicely, but this other one over here has a big gap. It almost looks like this valve is either bent or somehow the valve seat has moved. So I'm gonna spin this crank over and we're gonna watch this valve open and close. Take a look at the valve opening there. I'm gonna continue to spin it. And you can see the valve coming to the closed position the piston coming back up to the top and right there take a look you can see that our valve now is fully seated there's a big gap between the valve seat and the valve surface well guys that didn't really turn out the way i thought it was originally i thought maybe we had just a bad ignition coil it turns out that our problem is way more serious now whether or not the customer is going to want to put the money into fixing this problem i'm not really sure i'm gonna have to talk to him about it this is not the only problem this car has when we did the code scan we found that we had several codes stored and even some codes for the transmission so even if we fix this problem this car is still going to need a lot more work so anyways i'm going to talk to the owner of the vehicle i'll see what he wants to do and i'll let you guys know tomorrow all right guys so fast forward i wanted to give you guys an update before i ended off the video i did talk to the customer and he does want to go ahead and fix the vehicle so stay tuned because there is going to be a part two where we are going to tear this engine apart we're going to try to figure out what happened hopefully we can get this thing fixed without breaking the bank so like i said stay tuned to the channel because there will be a part two now as far as the creator elite scan tool if you guys are interested i will leave a link down below in the description if you own a gm vehicle or work on a lot of gms i definitely recommend checking this out like i said this is a full-blown professional level scan tool for gm vehicles in a handheld unit this thing basically does everything that my 1200 scan tool does but only for gm vehicles that means that not only do you have the ability to read every module on the vehicle but you also have the ability to do bi-directional controls special functions such as crankshaft relearns abs brake functions such as calibrations and bleeding key immobilizer functions such as add and programming keys the list goes on and on but if you guys want more information click on the link down below now one thing I would like to mention is that this thing does come with a free one-year update basically what that means is that you can download the latest software into this tool free for the next year now the cool thing is that even after your year is up if you decide not to renew your subscription you will not lose the functionality of this scan tool also I was able to get you guys a discount code I will include that in the link down below anyways guys thank you for watching the video like I always say I hope you found it useful information educational entertaining if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up if you haven't done so already make sure you subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks